Not yet. What's up, folks? What's up? I made it. Um, I had a little bit of computer issues, which is typical for me. And I got a jerk bait caught in my sweatshirt and my hoodie. <laughs> so I was grabbing my jerk bait from out of my boat, uh, jerk bait box from out of my boat. And uh, I guess when I closed it the other day, one of the hooks from one of the jerk baits was on the outside of that apartment. And so when I kind of st stacked everything up against my shirt, I set it down and the box was kind of hanging there and I had a hook in there. So anyway, I had to get the snips out and, you know, do whatever I needed to do to get that thing cut off. I'm trying to get these comments pulled up. This is the first time I've done this um, solo. Greg's using my right hand man. Here's, here's some comments coming in. Be a little bit different, but I think we're going to work through it. So got Tom on here. Tom says, hello. Good evening. How's the audio out there? Video looking okay. Got Bass RX in here. So let's, um, I just want to talk about some things that have been working for me lately. Got Ron in here. What's up, Ron? Just spoke with Ron a while ago. Always good to talk to Ron. John Wells. Let's go. Bill's in here. Cool. So, what's going on with you guys? Anybody been out in the water over the weekend? And if so, where'd you go and how did you do? Was it was it slow or were they were they chomping? We had a little cold front kind of push through. Um, Saturday, I think Saturday evening. We actually Saturday morning we got some rain, and Saturday evening we got some rain, and then we had a tournament Sunday. Me and me and uh, Jerry, a.k.a. Mr. Sandwich, we fished a uh, little derby over there at Cedar. And it went pretty well. We had a lot of fun. It, yeah, that's right, Ron. I see Ron in there. It was super, super windy. I forgot about that. Man, I was burnt. It's one thing about fishing out in the wind. It just it really drains you. You just come home and you're just, well, you're windburned. I mean, that's why they, that's why they say windburn. You're just trashed. Um, but we had a good day. Um, we caught a few fish on a, on a toad, caught one fish punching and we caught some fish on a spinnerbait and we went to old oh, dependable, a little zoom speed crawl, which is, I mean, that's my go-to just if I want to get some bites. Um, we were talking about that the other day. If, I mean, if you go through an area without a zoom speed crawl and you don't get bit, there's not any fish there or they're just super, super, super negative And it's not going to matter what you throw. Let's see. Uh, John says, chat about him in New Jersey. Yo, yo, retrieve. Gotcha. Okay. So kind of stroking that chatterbait off the bottom. You're probably fishing that. You got grass around there? Or is that just a rock bottom? Tom said he had a lot of wind. Wind also, yeah. So, yeah, it was kite flying weather for sure. Got white whale fishing here. What's up, man? Backyard bassin. Man, you need to be right here, dude. It's a lot easier with you here. <laughs> Thanks, man. Got my back. Mostly rock. Gotcha. So let's talk about a. <laughs> I'm just laughing at backyard bass in here. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the bait. By the way, thank you guys for jumping on here, and thank you guys for being patient. But let's talk a little bit about some of the things that um, have been working in the southern Illinois and southeast Missouri area. Um. For you guys that are new on here, most of these names I'm recognizing, but um, I live a little bit south of St. Louis, so about 100 miles south of St. Louis on the Mississippi River, so I can jump across and fish in Illinois or fish in Missouri. And I do most of my fishing in Illinois because those lakes are only about an hour away from my house, hour to hour and 15 away from my house. Um, probably the closest lake to me that's worth fishing Um that's a bigger lake would be Lake Wapapello. And that is, uh, it's about an hour and 45 minutes. We got Clearwater. That's an, about an hour and 45 minutes. And uh, it's just a lot easier for me to drive across the river. I think we got, fro well, I think we're froze up here. I think we are froze up.
Technical difficulties. It's awesome. That's how it's supposed to go when you first start out doing this. Let me check my phone here. See what is going on. Are we live? Are we rolling still? Okay, I'm looking at my phone. Are we live? Are we rolling still? Okay. Good deal. Can you guys hear me? Because my, my uh, picture just froze up. Okay, awesome. So <laughs> disregard all that crap. My, my picture just froze up, and then the live just went. It stopped. It stopped at like four minutes and 23 seconds. Now it's back up and rolling. So um, sorry about that. Apologize. So anyway, um, like I was saying, it takes me about an hour and 45 minutes to stay in Missouri and get to a bigger body of water where I just drive about an hour over in Illinois. Um, so I'm, I'm constantly going over there and a lot of those lakes have grass and I love to fish, fish grass. So a lot of the stuff I'm talking about pertains to grass, but you can also apply it to lakes that, that don't have grass. So it's, you know, it's just really about finding the areas that are holding fish. And I've kind of been concentrating a little bit on um, these schooling bass. And I was talking to Ron on Ron earlier on my way home from work. Um, he fishes over Lake of Egypt a lot. And that that lake is notorious for uh having the big bait balls and the, and the bass that follow those bait balls around. And you can do a lot of offshore, just suspended fish, um, chasing those suspended fish around, especially this time of year. So that's kind of what I've been focusing on the last couple of weeks. And something that's really been playing for me is, um, I'm grabbing you know, all kinds of crap sitting out here. I brought half of my boat in here. So it could be a mess and it will be a mess by the end of the night, but an underspin. Um, this is, of course, this is a new Cumberland Pro. I'm going to be talking about some Cumberland Pro stuff tonight because these got a lot of neat products that are just coming out. Um, but I'm going to mix it in with a lot of other stuff. And before I go any further, this is all stuff that I use. I mean, you can see all this stuff on the videos. Um, this is not stuff that I found off Tackle Warehouse and I haven't really used. I'm not going to talk about anything I don't know about and that I haven't had success with. So this is not just reading the description box and telling you what it's supposed to do. This is just from my experience. So take that for what it's worth. But this is the new head design by Cumberland Pro, the underspin. And I've gotten to throw this around the last couple weeks and it runs really, really well. It, it, it tracks really, really well. And this blade, it's got a sample swivel on it and this blade uh, spins at a real slow speed, but I've been catching, I've been catching a few fish on this. I've got that rigged up. Uh, this is like a four inch Kai tech. And this is I'm trying to remember the color. I got them over here. Um, it's a side flash color, standard color, but the Kai techs are really great. Swims. I mean, everybody knows about Kai tech, but they're just super, super limber. They, they got a ton of action. And the thing I like about the Kai techs plastics is it stays it stays fluid, even in colder waters. You know, typically the colder the water gets, the stiffer the plastic. So you need something that's really, really flexible. And um, these just keep on doing what they're supposed to be doing. But this is a 3 8 ounce underspin. It's got a three out hook on it. And this is a, I can't, I'm not sure what the color, the name of the color is, but it's basically just white and it's got a little bit of a red, maybe chartreuse on the belly. You guys can see that. I don't know if this helps. Um, and it's got kind of a blunt nose on it. It's got the eyes and just, just a good little underspin. But that, this is kind of fun. Um, I've been prior to the last couple of weeks, I've been playing around that grass cause I really, really look forward to the fall bite in the grass and it's been going on and it's starting to, it's starting to fade out. So I started going over to Egypt a little bit because Egypt doesn't have quite the grass. So it's not so distracting when I go over to Cedar, which is another lake that I fish a lot got all these grass mats and you know, it's like a kidney candy store. I can't keep myself out of the grass. I just keep, keep wandering. And, you know, you, you get over there in the grass and you start casting a frog. Next thing you know, an hour's gone by, you start punching. Next thing you know, an hour's gone by. So I almost have to make myself go to a lake that doesn't have as much grass, force myself to fish offshore. And with that, with that uh, underspin, it's all about, um, it's all about using your electronics. So you kind of pull up your graph um, and you look for pinch points, any place where the lake narrows down, it's a, it's a funnel area. It's a pinch point. They're going to, the shad are typically going to congregate in those areas and the bass are going to find them. 
the mouths of creeks, another good spot to look at. Um, as you go back through the creeks, if it's a long creek, look for anywhere that the channel is getting closer to the bank. Those are typical areas. And if that channel intersects with some sort of a point, that's a good spot to go check out. And you got to you got to be disciplined when you're doing this kind of fishing. And that, that's kind of what I'm working on, um, not getting distracted. But you got to go out there and you got um, to put your head down and just keep scanning. So when you find some bait, um, you, you're going to need to find some bass mixed in there, obviously. And you're going to, if it doesn't look right, you got to move on. And you kind of, if you keep doing it a little bit, you'll, you'll, you'll know what to look for. But that underspin has been really good. So that's just about finding your bait. Finding your bass, throwing it down, throwing it through them, counting it down, and just reeling it really, really slow. I've been throwing it on 15 pound test, 15 pound fluorocarbon. And I like a seven foot medium heavy rod. That's just about perfect. You don't you don't need it too stiff of a rod, something that loads up good, and you can really set the hook in them. And that is really, really fun. I'm I'm uh I like fishing that way. It's something different, something that I don't do a whole lot. And I really I'm kind of focused on that right now. So let's let me go look at some of these comments here before I get too far behind, see if I missed anything and we'll maybe talk about. It. And also, um, you guys out there that have fished underspins and stuff, what's some of your favorite swim baits to put on there? I, you know, the Kitex are really good. Um, the caffeine shad is a really good one. This, the swimming caffeine shad. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the skinny dipper and the little dipper. Those are probably the ones I go to the most. I've had the most experience with those, but there's a, I mean, there's a ton of really good swim baits out there. Let's see who else we got on here. We got John Wells on here. That's right. He said mostly rock. Okay. Backyard says, Backyard Bassin says it's not your computer. It's the YouTube. He's talking about the little glitch I had a while ago. Like I said, this is going to be a little bit slower than when Greg is here with me because he's usually tackling the comments and I'm just running my mouth. Okay, here's a, let's see, Greg's got a question. How often do you throw moving baits for finding bass or do you strictly use graph? Um, if I am, if I know the, if I know the lake and I, have an idea of what I want to do. Like we were just talking about the underspin. If I'm, if I'm going to target those suspending fish and be looking for shad, then I'm hundred percent just, just idling around looking for, looking for bait. Um, if I'm just going, okay, let's go back. Say, say I'm in, in grass, I'm on a grass lake and there's mats involved in the fall. Um, I'm going to pick areas that are high percentage areas. So when this first starts happening, um, in, in the late summer, you start getting the, in the good match, you know, especially this year, the grass was really behind this year. A lot of times, um, in the post spawn, it's like, like late May, early June, you'll start getting some mats and you can actually target those post spawn fish. They'll spawn. Some of them will move out deeper and to spin and some of them will stay shallow in those mats and they'll start keying in on the bluegill beds and stuff. So there's actually a really good mat bite, um, punching and frogging, and sometimes it gets overlooked. But this year, I think it's got to do with with uh, so many people being off work and so many people being out on the water. I believe that um, a lot of the boat traffic knocked a lot of that grass back, even on even on these uh, ten horse motor lakes. There's a lot less grass um, for the time frame than there was in the past which was super frustrating because that's one of the bites I look forward to. I typically have some, I have a couple good weeks of doing that, that hitting that post spawn stuff in the grass. Um, but this year it was, it was pushed back. So I kind of got a little bit sidetracked chasing a squirrel there, went down a rabbit hole, but um, I'm looking for high percentage areas when I'm, when I'm flipping the mats and stuff, and then you have to cover water. So it starts, see where I was at there. Okay. It starts, um, I got sidetracked in the summertime. It starts out there on the points and stuff. And it, as it goes on through the fall, those fish will start moving back into the coves a little bit and back into the creeks. So you're going to start in that high percentage area, but then it's, then you still got to cover water. You got to put your head down you got to, you know, if you're punching mats, you got to cover a lot of water and you got to listen for the bluegill pop and looking for bait activity in, in the mat. So 
to answer your question, um, I'm making a long answer to a short question. You kind of got to do both. Um, some of the stuff you got to cover water and some of them you just hide around and find the fish. Um, see what else we got in here. Oh yeah, David, good to see you on here, man. Backyard Bassin says bile spawn. Okay, we got Zoom Zoom Fluke in here. Yeah, Zoom Fluke is a good jerk bait for sure. Six cents. I haven't tried only six cents uh soft plastic I've tried is that uh prawn. I mean fish a lot of the crankbaits and stuff. The spark shad, yep. It's a good one. Six cents divine swim bait. Kitek Easy Shiner. Yeah, Tom says the Kitek Easy. Shiner is another good Kitek bait, especially the four inch. I have thrown that one a little bit last year on a rig. Okay, backyard bass. And Greg says, uh, do you like a straight, straight swimming swim bait or one that has the body roll? Strictly a fall, not a deep summer ledge bite. Um, as far as just a single swim bait, some of the ones that I like to throw, like the um, – that Zoom, what's it called? The Zoom Easy Swimmer. I throw that one a lot. There is, you know, the bigger Kitex. I don't know. You know, it's on the swim bait thing. I keep it kind of simple. I like a little bit of roll. I like a little bit of tail wag. And I will, uh, I, I don't fish a lot of the big swim baits, just to be, be honest with you. I've had, I've caught some really good fish on the big swim baits, but I'm not like a swim bait junkie or anything. So I really can't tell you. Um, a lot of the little slight variations in the different brands of swim baits. Um, I've tried a few. And when I found one that started working and catching fish, that's kind of what I stayed with. So I, I tried it, man, I got so many plastics. I have to, it's hard to, it's hard to go down um, the path of a certain style of plastic too far. I usually go down it a little bit. And when I find something that kind of works for me, I kind of hover in that area and I might stray just slightly here and there, but as long as it's still, working for me, I kind of feel like, well, I found what I'm kind of looking for. So I, I typically just kind of keep it simple, but, um, Kai tag, we got several people in here saying Kai tag. They're, they're very easy to find and they, they're just, they work really good. Squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Yeah. No kidding, man. That's easy for me. I get sidetracked. That's why Greg, Greg's here. He keeps me in line. So, um, we talked about the underspin. So let's piggyback that with the A-Rig. So that, that kind of ties in with um, that whole offshore schooling, schooling bass bite thing. So I went out and fished the A-Rig the other day. It's the first time I fished it since probably last March, maybe. I just, I don't fish an A-Rig all that much, but this is the time of year where you do have to pick it up because it seems like it gets those bites. A lot of times those fish won't come up for a jerk bait or they're just a little bit too deep um, to come down and get that jerk bait. And something about this A rig, as crazy as it looks, and as many wires and as gaudy as it is, it just it fires the fish up. I think it's just such a it's such a big thing that happens, and they just they react to it. There's just so much going on. You got all these blades, um, and this is this is just a uh, Flash Mob Junior. That's the one I've thrown a couple different ones. I don't like the Terminator brand. That's got the wires that stick out. It catches too much wind. So I've had a lot of good luck on this Flash Mob Junior, throwing it around. And A-Rig, if you guys haven't thrown A-Rig, most of you guys probably have. It's a lot of fun, man. I mean, it, it's a lot of fun. And, and this is a really light A-Rig, so you don't need any heavy, you don't need a heavy-duty rod to throw this thing around. I was throwing it the other day on like a seven-foot-three. It was basically a football jig rod. It's the same rod that I used to like pitch jigs and soft plastic and shallow, um, kind of a you know, like a fast tip, just, it doesn't have to be stiff. It doesn't have to be long and stiff or anything like that. It's a uh, 20 pound test, 17 to 20 pound test floral. And I'll throw it on braid too. And, and that's kind of, um, people got different opinions on the braid versus floral. And I don't know. Um, I've caught them on both. I mean, I've been in the boat where, you know, somebody was throwing braid, somebody was throwing floral and we're both catching fish. So, um, Obviously, the clearer the water, that floral might come into play. There's a different sink rate. You know, 
braid float. So possibly you could swim, swim the Alabama river a little bit slower because you got more lift, but then you got smaller diameter. There's a, just a lot of variables in that. So really you just kind of got to go out there and play around with it and see, see what works for you. Um, I do know one thing, one thing that's nice about that braid is when you get hung up, you can straighten these little hooks out. And with that fluorocarbon, it's kind of 50, 50. Sometimes you'll end up breaking your whole rig off and these rigs are not cheap. I mean, this, I think this is like 13 bucks, but by the time you put your baits and stuff on there, you can be pushing 20 bucks, especially if you go up to some of the hog collars and some of the more expensive, um, Shane, I think Shane Lee, makes, uh, some pretty pricey a rigs are really, really nice, but they're a little bit more expensive. And you start putting, um, putting some premium heads on there, some premium swim baits on there. It can get up to, you know, it can reach that $30 mark for an a rig, which is crazy. You know, um, I typically am fishing this a pretty shallow. I would say, well, I'm not fishing it much deeper than like 15, 16, 17 foot, but a lot of times I'm throwing this in that four to 12 foot zone. So I like lighter heads. Eighth ounce heads is what I'm typically going with. Um, this particular rig, it's got eight, let's see, it's got eighth ounce heads on the bottom. I just, I caught a couple of big fish on this the other day and they just tore it up. So I haven't really rigged it back up, but I got eighth ounce, eighth ounce heads on the bottom. And I've got a couple 16th ounce heads on the top. And this thing works good. If you need to fish it out deeper, you just let it sink and you just slow roll it. And that's that's kind of a key that I found with um, this A-Rig. I've only been, I, I don't know, I've fished the A-Rig the last four or five years, but I kind of really started playing with it the last couple of years, just kind of tweaking a few things here and there. Um, the slower you can fish it, you guys let me know what you think about this. I think the slower you can fish it, the more bites you're going to get on it. And one other thing that I found to be a, a great thing to do is, is this is just like the same thing as fishing a square bill or spinnerbait. He's doing little short twitches, um, you know, put some English on it, reeling it real slow. Just do a little rod twitch, reel it, and then kind of slow your reel down, maybe speed it up a little bit. Just just make it do a little bit something different, you know, because what happens is when you speed it, speed this a rig up, these wires will collapse on you. And then when you slow it down, they'll open back up. So it's causing this little bait ball to kind of flare out. And your blades are going to change too. You know, as you're slowing some, slowing this down and reeling it faster, the blade speeds are going to change a little bit. So you're getting kind of this, this squid type of deal. And if the fish is following it hot and heavy and all of a sudden it slows down, you know, it kind of, they kind of run into it, you know? Um, so this is fun. This is a, uh, you catch a crap load of fish. Maybe you're just catching small fish, but who cares? Anytime you can go out in a cold water period and catch a lot of fish, it's fun. But um, as far as swim baits, the same thing. The little Kitex, uh, the caffeine shad. Let me show you that one. That's a that's kind of one of one of me and my buddy Jerry discovered last year that was working really good for us. Let's see if I got any of those in here. Yeah, here you go. It's actually, yes, yeah, the swimming caffeine check. Oh, yeah, this is made by Stratine. And I'm kind of going to give away some local juice here. Uh, Smoky Shad is a color that uh, has been working for us last year. hope Jared doesn't watch this. I'm telling you guys this. That's the Smoky Shad color. It's got a pearl bottom, and it's got a smoky top on it. We had a lot of good luck on this color. And same thing on those high techs, that, that side flash. And also, here's another color that I like. This is the just the sexy shag color. Everybody but this is kind of translucent. So if you got a really, really slick day, high bluebird skies, no wind, clear water. Um, you know, clear water to me is four foot visibility around here. So if you got clear water... This is uh, something you might want to look at. If you got a little bit of wind, a little bit of cloud cover, the sight flash, it's a good color to go to. And then, and some days it doesn't really matter. Some days it's just all about, you know, if you roll that thing through the fish, they're going to react to it. They can't help it. So um, you can play around with colors, but I like to keep it simple. I don't, you know, you got something a little bit bold and then something that's kind of, kind of see-through. So that's my take on the A. Let's keep it simple here. My daughter's down here. And she, <laughs> you you gonna ask her? What are you gonna do? You don't want to do it now? Yeah. You chicken it out? She was gonna ask you guys a couple like 
trivia questions. You want to jump jump in here? These folks are all cool. These folks know me. It's all good. Okay, it's called Twins Trivia. We're going to do something different. I don't know. You guys are going to just have to play along with us. So this is my daughter, Ella. And Sophia's doing it too. And Sophia's on the other side with the dog family. So um, anyway, she had this idea that she wanted to come down here and do a little trivia question for you guys. Actually, three trivia questions. Yes, we'll and start with one. We're going to start with one. So this, this is just fun. I mean, I didn't. it's not like I put together some prize package or something. She just, five minutes before I came on here, she's like, hey, let's do like three trivia questions. So um, you guys, this is going to be tough on you. So you want to read those off? Okay. What you think the answer is. Yeah, comment what you think the answer is. Yes. And okay. okay, I'm going to put the question on the uh, screen. So you want to read it? Okay. Here we go. Um, approximately how many species of fish are there worldwide? Okay, I'm going to give you a couple choices. This is the multiple choice question. So yeah. you're going to have what, four answers? Yes. Four possibilities. Okay. Okay, I'm going to type them in the thing and then tell you. So we have 9,000. 27,000, 56,000, and 72,000. Okay, I'm going to type them in. A little family, family bonding time. And? The answer's coming in quick. I know. I was wrong on this. I, I guessed the wrong answer. Okay. So there, there's your options. So, so A far, is 9,000. Yes. B is... 27,000, 36,000, and 72,000. So far, nobody's got it right. <laughs> first, first, got to get it right. Let's see. Nobody's guessed it right You're going to win the round of applause. Nine. <laughs> Nine. Oh, there we go. We got Casey Forrester. We got Casey Forrester is the big winner of bragging rights. The now. answer was 27,000. So 27,000. Uh, species of fish. That's that's uh, freshwater and saltwater, right? Oh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Here's a little fact: there are approximately 27,000 known species species of fish, easily making them the most diverse group of vertebrates. And scientists estimate that there are still thousands of fish species yet to be discovered. So, good job. Next question. I said 72. Didn't I? Yeah, you I said 72. Okay, everybody. <laughs> but your dad can only catch one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky. I can catch trout too sometimes. I'm good for like trout, crappie, and bass, usually, <laughs> and bluegill. Every once in a while, I'll snag a drum or a carp or something. Make it interesting. And a catfish. Okay, Sophia's going to read the last one, but here's the second question. What speak? Oh, wait, let me type it in first. <laughs> you already got it up there. Yeah, almost, yeah. Okay. No, that's the first one. Yeah, I'm on the second one. Okay. I'm doing it. Okay. 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 Um, the question was, what species of fish produce the most eggs? Okay. And then your answers are. Good guess, John. That was my guess. That was, yeah, that's what his guess. That was my guess. Okay. Your answers are ocean sunfish, squirrelfish, red tooth triggerfish, or salmon. Okay, everybody say salmon. salmon. See, maybe you're wrong. Maybe it is no, salmon. I'm not. I mean, these guys can't be, can't be wrong. I know. Okay, I'll tell you who the first person is. Surgeon. Surgeon. Okay. Could be red tooth. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. what's this right here? Sunfish. sunfish. Was that it? Yes. Was it the sunfish? Yes, it was the. Oh, she got it again. You got it again. Because you're so good at this. It was the ocean sunfish. Casey Forrester, you did it again. <laughs> okay. Um, the ocean sunfish produces more eggs than any other species. You know what, of Casey? Fish. Casey, send me a private message. I'm gonna send you one of these t-shirts. We got a large and extra large t-shirt. If you're interested in that, if these fit you, um, these are the new Ten Horse Money. T-shirts that we just got finished up a Choose while back. Our color. <laughs> so it said 10 horse money on the front and they said support local fishing. I mean, you guessed two out of three. That's yeah, pretty, that's pretty impressive. So, <laughs> Show yeah. off, Casey. Send me a private message and I'll get you one of these. Okay. So here's a little fact about the ocean sunfish. 
The ocean sunfish produces more eggs than any other species of fish. In fact, it produces more eggs than any other vertebrae on the planet. A single female can produce up to 300 million eggs at a single spawning, each measuring about a 0.5 of an inch in diameter. Considered a delicacy, a delicacy yeah, that's right. in Asia, a single ocean sunfish can fetch prices as high as 600 U.S. dollars. Mm, that's a lot of fish sticks. Okay, and she's going to read the next one. You're going to switch uh, places? Yes. Yeah, she's just going to read the title, but still. Uh, okay. What is the fastest fish? The question was... What is the fastest fish? Show your head. Fish? Folks at home want to see your head. This is my other daughter, Sophia. Hi. <laughs> okay, let me get this So on. What, is, what is the fastest this, fish, right? The third question. Yeah. Camera, okay, got it on there. Wait, are these that one? Yes. The answers are swordfish, mako shark, mako shark, mako shark, and yeah. sawfish. Selfish. Selfish. I'm not a sawfish. Okay, once again, the answers are swordfish, racing shark, mako shark, or sailfish. Okay, and then the answer is <laughs> this. Small water charter says one getting away from an alligator. <laughs> That's the fastest fish. <laughs> Okay, the first person was Casey. No, the first was person was John Wales. Was it? But the second one was oh, yeah, 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 he was Casey. Okay, so well, you guys are doing that. good. Uh, and now I'm gonna read the fact, and this is your last one. Okay. Okay. Although it is, of course, extremely difficult to measure the swimming speed of a large fish in the wild, the uh Cosmopolitan, Cosmopolitan selfish. Selfish, selfish is considered by many experts to be the fastest fish in the world. It has been clocked at speeds of 110 kilometers per hour or 68 miles per hour. And the average fish would be hard pressed to reach 12 miles per hour. So it's a really fast fish. Yeah, it's probably the only fish that can get away from a large coat. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was awesome. That's it with twin trivia. All right. Bye. <laughs> uh, thanks for checking that out. That's kind of what happens around the Ben Horse Monty uh, household in the evenings. Got a couple kids and puppy dog running around here, and life is good, man. So they wanted to do that. I thought that'd be fun for you guys. So, man, you guys are quick on those answers. I, I, uh, I thought it was a swordfish. I was wrong. I got all three of those wrong. I went with salmon, and then uh, I can't remember what the other ones were, but. Um, they do enjoy, I see John ask, uh, John Wells ask, um, do they enjoy fishing? They do. Um, Sophia is really, uh, super, super patient. She'll, she'll go out with me for a couple hours and not get a bite and just keep casting. Um, Ella, she's good for about 10 minutes, but they both, they both do enjoy it. Um, so look at, we have like a five acre pond here in our backyard. So we do a lot of, we do a lot of ultralight fishing for crappie and stuff. You know, we'll just take a little hair jig out there. My neighbor actually ties some really killer crappie jigs. So we'll take a little ultralight out there with a four pound test and, and cast for crappie. we got some nice crappie. We'll catch some panfish and bluegill. Every once in a while we'll hang into like, I don't know, five, six, seven pound channel cat, which is always about a 15 to 20 minute battle. It's fun. So they, they do, they dig it. Um, every once in a while we go on a little trout fishing adventure. Um, small water charters that says hello again from Okeechobee, man. Thanks for joining us, dude. Appreciate that. Um, let's see. Yeah. So, okay. Like a one-on-one -on -one daughter against daddy pond fish off thing. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> we can do that. I've got a few there. Actually, they've been in a couple of my videos. Um, me and Ella went out to Lake Gerardo and did a video like the summer and then Sophia was um with me one time up there in, in Greg's stomp of ground up there on Perry County Lake up north of here. So we had some fun times. It's good stuff. Fishing is getting good down south. Yeah. Fishing's still pretty good around here. You know, fall fishing is it's uh it's hit and miss. You can have some really good days and then you can have some really slow days and then you can have some really tough days where you're just scratching your head trying to figure stuff out. But usually if you keep at it, you'll you'll run into a little group of fish somewhere. It may be the last 30 minutes of the day, maybe in the middle of the day, whenever. You just got to keep bouncing around. It's uh, it's it's fall fishing. 
main thing that I try to do is cover water. Don't get, you know, fish thorough enough to get a bite if the fish are there, but you can't really, like, I don't fish a lot of slow stuff this time of year. I'm usually doing like, you know, some moving baits or if I'm fishing something um, that's slow, I'm fishing specific areas, like high percentage areas. Like say I'm throwing a football jig or something, you know, I'm, I'm fishing a point. I'm not so much going down a long, long stretch of bank um, for the most part, unless I really know that there's, there should be some fish in there. If it's a channel swing bank or something that just, just uh, screams fish should be here. And if I'm seeing bait and stuff, yeah, maybe I'll slow down a little bit for the most, most of the time though, it's all about covering water in the fall. Um, yeah. Hank um, hit that thumbs up guys. That really helps uh, the channel out a lot. Um, it helps spread the live stream and stuff and the feedback keeps this thing going. Let's see. We were talking about suspending fish. Well, okay. Well, let me, let me go. Let me throw one more bait out there that I've caught some fish on recently. And like I said earlier, this is just stuff that I've been catching fish on probably the last three weeks, maybe something like that. I mean, I'm not going to do like all the different things you can do in fall. This is just stuff that's been working for me a little bit. Um, so jerk bait, the jerk bait is really starting to happen right now and it mixes in with the alabama rig and underspin in my opinion i mean you could throw a spoon in there and a blade bait but i haven't been catching any fish on those so i'm not going to talk about them um this is the kvd deep diver and this is the pro blue this is a this sucker gets down this thing easily gets down there to 10 foot um on eight to 10 pound test. I I'm typically throwing eight to 10 pound fluorocarbon. Just depends. I was, I usually throw eight and I just bumped up to 10 pound because the lake that uh, fish a lot has big stripers in it. And this is about the time when those things start munching. So you can see that but that's just a pro blue. You know, it's got kind of a, got that bluish purple back, got kind of clear sides and it's got that white belly on it. But that is a, that's a standard staple color. If you're, you know, if you're new to jerkbait fishing or, and you guys that have been doing jerk have fish jerkbait for a while, you know that, um, pro blue, the French pearl, which is, let me see if I got one of those. Let's see if I got the old French pearl. These are, these are like some of the colors that you have to have. for jerkbait. You don't need a lot of colors. I don't think, I mean, once you, once you start playing around with jerkbaits, you'll end up having, I mean, that's, these are just the ones that I use. I got three or four more boxes just like that, or just kind of got, it got out of control. So I had to just pick out some of the ones that I, that I have some confidence in, but you can get, it's just like anything else. You can so carry anything that's like shiny has eyeballs and has a cool shape and treble hooks. You end up buying way too many of them and then you can't ever get them out. But the, uh, the French pearl is basically it's just a real, it's a bright white and it will have some kind of an orange belly or a little bit of yellow. This is the, the RC sticks version. I can't get this off, but maybe I can keep talking and get it off. It's probably making a bunch of noise in the computer. Trouble hooks, trouble hooks, trouble hooks. We're almost there. Okay, something like this. Really bright white. You're going to have a little bit of orange. This is basically a French pearl color. I mean, it depends on the company. They're going to be a little bit different, but that's the, that's the gist of it. I got a trouble hook stuck in the floor. Um, so pro blue, this uh, French pearl, I'm trying to get this trouble hook, and then clown color. Um, this is this is the Electcraft, basically. I think it's called, it's a wasabi or something. I don't know what to call it. But anyway, that's basically a clown pattern. So those are the three colors that you really need to have. In my opinion, a pro blue, French pearl, and then a wasabi. And you can throw in like American Chad, which is a, um, I don't have one out here, but you can throw in that American Chad, which is chrome sides and a black back, kind of like your, you know, chrome rattle trap, you know, black back, chrome, black back. So, um, just some general rules of thumb on jerk baits that French pearl is going to work really good on cloudy days, overcast days with, a lot of winds anytime you got the surface of the water is getting disrupted by something you can throw something that's a little bit more bold on sunny days 
I like the clown and then I like that American shackler because anything with the bright chrome sides, it's got a lot of flash. Um, that that sun just pops off of this. So you want something bold on, on overcast days and something really shiny on the sunny days. Or you want something that's really translucent. If you got really, really clear water, um, I like the colors that are really hard to see. And this is where you start getting 75 jerk baits in your box. There's, I mean, you can pull up like mega bass, you know, the vision 110 and look at all the different subtle variations of colors. And you can easily see how you start collecting all these different things, especially, you know, a lot of things, a lot of times it happens is you go out and you have it in your mind. You have the mindset of you're going to go out and catch a fish from jerk bait. And you may have a tough day. Maybe the fishing's off. So you think it's the wrong color. Um, most of the time it's not the wrong color. It's just, the location um you didn't bounce around enough and i'm speaking from my experience because this happens to me a lot this is how i've got so many jerk baits um it's because you you didn't you didn't bounce around enough you didn't spend enough time in the right location or the fish it was a post frontal deal the fish were just off um or your cadence was off so you think it's the wrong jerk bait color um and a lot of times, in my opinion, it, it's not. If if you just go by those rules of thumb, like what I just talked about, those are those are really all the colors you need. The rest is just about finding the fish and and fishing for you know fishing in areas that are holding the fish more so than the color of the jerk bait. If if you've got the right color for the for the conditions or whatever, but there's a ton of different colors. Um, some people like you know this orange loud belly. White belly. I mean, gosh, you can talk about jerk baits for hours. This bluegill is a good color. Um, I think you really need to have a bluegill colored jerk bait. A couple of them. This is a little S, um, Lucky Craft in seventy eight. And let's see. As far as the different brands of jerk baits, if you want to spend twenty five dollars, the Mega Bass Vision one hundred and ten is a staple. It's a great jerk bait. It cash really well. It's got a little bit different action. It's got a little bit different sound got a great weight transfer system in them if you want something that looks the same but is you know that eight dollar price points this rc sticks is a pretty good one i think this is a lucky strike brand these are they're different jerk baits they look the same they've got a different sound to them they got a different a little bit different roll um they they all have a tendency to kind of blow out on you if you work them too fast they're kind of plain out on you a completely different jerk bait but same profile. Uh, Lucky Crafts are a good midpoint, mid price point jerk bait. They they have a, a DD version, which is a deep diver, and then the standard. Um, and they're 13, 14 bucks, something like that. They've got the two sizes. Well, they got a bunch of different sizes. They got the Stacy's and all that. But the two sizes that I mainly use are the 78 and then the 110 or the, the 100. I'm sorry. The 100 is. I don't know. It's just a little bit bigger. Hang on. I got. I got a mess. Anyway, um, another another jerk bait that I've been fishing the last couple of years is the striking jerk baits, which I just showed you that one. Um, the deeper divers are pretty nice. They get they get pretty good. That's just a striking, pretty standard. The rogue man, the rogue's been around forever, and they still catch fish. They're like throwing a biscuit though. Um, if you got the right setup, you can. As far as bait casting setup, you can still throw a rogue decent, um, but a lot of guys will will go to a spinning rod to throw the rogue, and I've got a big old water rogues. I like the the gold colored rogue; it's been a really good one for me. You can't really tell what's going on here; it's just a big old mess. And some of the other things that the Rapala makes a good jerk bait. The husky jerks, man. Some of you guys that have been on been out there fishing the jerk bait for a while. You remember the old husky jerk made by Rapala? That is still a pretty good jerk bait. Not a lot of people throw those. Um, they've got, you know, they got the rip stop. They've got several different, um, Rapala's got several different jerk baits out there. This is the, uh, the Shadow Rat. I can only kind of made this famous. I haven't thrown this a whole lot. That's it, man. We're not going to talk about jerk baits anymore. You get the ideal. That's another thing you need to throw in the mix with the A-Rig and Underspan is a jerk bait. Sometimes they'll, they'll hit a jerk bait when they won't hit an A-Rig and vice versa. So you kind of got to have all three of those out there to play around with and just 
check out the mood of the fish. That's all I got on that. You can throw a shad wrap too in there. I like shad wraps. I got a bunch of those. Those are, fun. Those are really fun to collect. Another thing I've been throwing around a little bit, and this kind of this will this will translate to grass and to rock rocky areas, is uh, just a spinner bait. And I was actually fishing this one in the tournament, and I lost the blade. Um, I like a three eighths ounce to half ounce spinner bait. The water's a little bit stained. I'm going to be throwing white and chartreuse. It is hard to beat white and chartreuse. Um, the water I was fishing the other day was six, seven foot visibility, but the wind was blowing really, really hard. And I caught fish on this white and chartreuse. It was real bold. It was loud. You could see it. Um, in that same scenario, if there's not a lot of wind, I probably won't be fishing a swim bait. I'll be fishing a swim jig, you know, in slick conditions, same kind of, same kind of area I'm going with, uh, with the swim jig. But if you got, um, dirty water or a lot of wind, you cannot go wrong with the white chartreuse. This is just a war eagle. Uh, a lot of guys are fishing those out deeper too. I haven't got into doing that, but I'm planning on doing that. So we just talked about swim spinner baits, and I mentioned the swim jig. This is another lure that I've been or bait that I've been throwing around lately. And you guys that are familiar with my channel, you know that I throw a swim jig around a lot. I kind of actually, um, Greg from Backyard Bassing got me fishing those a lot more the last couple of years. I mean, I'd thrown them for years, but I didn't have a lot of confidence in them because I hadn't caught a lot of fish on them. In the last couple of years, this is one of my my go tos for covering water. If I if I need a bite, I've got no problem putting this in my hand, covering water. And nine times out of ten, you're going to run across an aggressive fish that will bite this. So probably the color I throw, I throw two colors the most. Let me get the other one. I throw the black and blue um, a lot or some variation of black and blue. This is this. Uh, I think this is called black shad. I'm not quite sure. I can't remember the, the name of this color, but I'll throw this when I'm around the grass shallow. And I think the fish are feeding on bluegill. It's pretty straightforward. I like a green pumpkin rage crawl. So I like to mix those colors. I don't I don't I want a little bit of contrast there. This rage crawl, this is a quarter ounce. So when I'm fishing, um, say I'm fishing zero to six foot, if that's my target range, I like that quarter ounce because you can really feather that um, around laydowns, any kind of hard cover through grass. A lot of times I'm fishing in the lanes and grass. If it's not matted, you'll see this little lanes where the coontail grows up. That's where your fish are sitting at. So you can, you can pitch that in there. You can make a nice little cast. And you can really kind of slow roll it and keep and just kind of pop it up. You're not doing like that Alabama shake, but you're just kind of feeding it and slowing it down. And that thing just kind of glides. And then those fish are sitting down there and it goes over and they come up and they suck it down. It's a, a lot of times it's a visual bite. You can just barely see your, your swim jig down there and you'll see something roll up on it. And that's, that's a lot of times that's how that bite happens. It's really exciting. But um, that rage crawl, it's got that flat side on it. So it allows, it allows you to really slow roll that stuff. If I'm fishing out deeper, um, and if I think the fish are on shad, I'm going to bump up to a three eighths ounce. And I'm going to, of course, have this chartreuse shiner color, which this, I've caught a lot of fish on this too this year. It's been a really good one. And I will, I'll probably go, I'll get away from, if I'm fishing out deeper, I'll get away from that rage crawl and I'll put a menace on there or I'll go to a small swim bait, like a three inch probably a three to four inch skinny dipper or little dipper. Um, what, whatever your swim, swim, uh, swim bait of choice is, but this is for deeper. And this is a new jig made by Cumberland pro. This is the new, uh, lemon out compact swim jig. This is pretty sweet. They're trying to get all this stuff in tackle warehouse. They don't have it there yet. Things are moving just a little bit slow, but unique jig. It's got a wire weed guard, got a real nice stout three out gammy hook super super sharp um it's got this kind of blunt head design on it and it skips pretty good it comes through comes through wood you know a lot of a lot of the uh swim jigs have that cone head, and the cone head kind of rolls over and it'll it'll get hung up so this blunt this blunt spot on here kind of comes up over cover really well and it, go, it does it goes through grass pretty good it goes through cover really really well and Anyway, I like this jig. So I keep it simple. I've got black and blue and some sort of a shad pattern. And there's a couple other 
here's another shad pattern that's pretty cool. It's a uh, lavender shad. This is also made by Cumberland Pro. That's a sweet looking little jig. These jigs got a lot of different colors in the skirt. I mean, I just like them, and they really handle. They ro they track good, which is cool. You know, they track really good. They run straight, and they they got a really good hookup ratio. This these double wires just collapse really well, and it's a smaller hook, but it pegs them. And they've got a couple more colors, but swim jig is my alternative to spinnerbait in calm conditions. I'm going to be leaning on that swim jig, and obviously, if I'm around a lot more grass. I can usually come through that grass a little bit better with this swim jig than I can a spinnerbait because, you know, that grass can get caught around these blades. And it, I mean, it still works. You just got to gotta pick it off. and it takes a little bit longer. So that's both of those baits have been catching some fish for me. Um, let me catch back up on some of these comments real quick and we'll go through. I've got too much stuff over there. I'm probably going to. Probably let's talk about fishing grass a little bit. We'll do a little bit of that. And we'll see what happens after that. I brought out like nine rods and I realized that it's going to take all night long. I don't have quite all night long, but I sure do want to spend some time with you guys here. Let's see where we at here on these questions. John Well says, uh, fall's been tough here in New Jersey. Starting to pick up now that the water is in the 50s. Yeah, that's what we got around here. Um, like I said earlier, I'm in uh, southeast Missouri and southern Illinois. And our water temps have been... I saw 54 Sunday, but that, that, that was all the way in the back of a creek. And we'd had some rainfall the night before. So there was actually some fresh cold water coming in. But the main lake was 57. So we're hit, we're in those mid 50s. And that's to me, that's fall. You know, that once that water hits 60, 61 on down, that's, you know, that's when you, you, they usually start feeding. Says, uh, let's see, Smallwater Charters says has been killing it in the new Headwater Headwaters Lake. The new Headwaters Lake. So fill us in on that, man. Yeah, Hank says hit the thumbs up. So Smallwater Charters has caught some bigs. Nine six. Nine six around here is a really big fish. Seven eight is a really big fish. Um, we catch a few, you know, on that five to six pound class. That's a pretty solid, solid fish around here. Most of most of the tournaments, if you go in with a six pound, you know, bass, you're gonna be right there in contention for uh for the big fish of the tournament. So those, yeah, we don't we don't see we don't see nine sixes around here. I mean, every once in a while, you'll, you'll bust a 7.8. I haven't caught a 7-pounder in a while. I've caught several of them, but it's been quite a while. Okay, so John Wells says, best suspending jerk bait. That is a weighted question because that's really, really an opinion. I, I will say that I bought my first – Mega Bass Vision 110, believe it or not, like two years ago. I just couldn't pay 25 bucks for a jerk bait. But I've been in a boat a couple different times where I was throwing the RC stick and my buddy was throwing the Vision 110 and he caught some fish behind me that passed my bait up and it got me thinking. We were we were throwing similar color patterns. And so we did, we kind of, I, I said, man, throw that, throw that jerk bait out next to the boat. His vision 110 and I threw my RC stick and, and we were just kind of twitching them and looking at the difference. Um, and there, that's why I said there is a difference, not only in the sound and the castability, <clears throat> but they do have a little bit of difference in the water. So I went ahead and bought a few. And another reason, not, not only did I see that they, that, that one worked a little bit better for that day. Now the RC sticks are great too. I've caught a ton of fish on them, but, um, Typically on a jerk bay around here, I'm fishing them around grass a lot. So I'm not losing as many. Now, now I do fish them around standing, not standing timber, but brush piles, like over the tops of brush piles and maybe out on the edges of laydowns. Bottom line is they're usually not getting down, especially if you're fishing the standard one. They're not getting down to more than four or five feet. So if you do get them hung up, you can usually go in and, you know, poke them with a rod and get them off for the most part. And then if you're fishing grass, grass is not a problem. You know, you're not going to lose them in the grass. You're not getting hung up grass. You can just rip it free. 
Um, so I went ahead and bit the bullet and I've caught quite a few fish on them. Um, so that would probably be that, that'd probably be right up there with my favorite jerk bait. The lucky crafts are really good. Had a lot of good luck with them. I've caught a lot of fish on the Rapala Husky jerks and the rogues. There's just a lot of, a lot of good baits out there. So that's really, it's really up to you. I don't have a firm answer on that one. Bill says he loves jerkbait fishing. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting there right now. I mean, Patrick Walters just crushed them down at Lake Fork. So, you know, and, and people fish jerkbaits all year long. That's something, do you, do you guys do this? You get away from the jerkbait when it gets warmer? I, I do it and we shouldn't. We, those, you can still catch fish all year long on a jerkbait. But the thing is, is when it gets cold, you're thinking a rig, you're thinking jerk bait, you're thinking jig, you know, spoon underspin. And then when it gets warm, you've got all these other options. You know, you're throwing your your square bills into the mix, you're throwing all your top water stuff into the mix. When the mats get up, you got punch in there, you got frog in. So the old jerk bait just kind of gets put in the back of the closet. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of uh our mindset is it's a cold water deal. But I think the reason that is, is because when it gets warmer, we just have so many more options. We just get sidetracked and we forget about it. But each year we're reminded that it does work all year long. Uh, John says, what hook size on the back of that jerk bait? Um, most of these jerk baits have like size six hooks on them. I don't know what jerk bait you're talking about. Now the jerk bait that got caught in my sweatshirt, it was like a size six. It was a, Gamagatsu because I put those on there, the round bins. That, that's a good, if you're looking for replacement hooks, the Gamagatsu round bin is a pretty solid hook. Had a lot of good luck with those. Do a great job. They're really sharp. They stay sharp for a long time. Um, yeah, and getting back on the jerk bit a little bit. Um, what you can do, you, you want your, especially in the cold water period, you want your uh, jerk bait to be suspending or falling super, super slow. Um, like maybe a foot every 10 seconds or something or six inches every 10 seconds, just a really slow fall. This is what I found. I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe you guys have a different opinion on this, but either suspending or just falling really, really slow. Cause that fish is kind of moving up. And if it's falling really, really slow, it's going towards, towards the fish. So if you're, if your bait is rising, a couple ways to combat that are suspended strips. They're a little bitty lead strips and you put them on, on the, um, the uh, nose, you can put them on the bill, or you can put them right on the throat of the jerk bait. Um, but what I usually do is I'll put a couple, I'll take a split ring and I'll put it on the wire hanger. Let me see, let me get my jerk bait again real quick. <clears throat> I don't know if I have any ring up right now like that. Yeah, so I'll just take a, this is that little SB78. I'll just take a, just a split ring and I'll put it on the actual hook eye and that will usually make that thing suspend if it's if it's wanting to rise if it doesn't work i'll put another one on and then if that doesn't work i'll replace this front hook a lot of times i'll put on the bigger jerk baits like the 110s and stuff i'll go up to like a four or a five so that most of them have sixes maybe maybe smaller but most of them have like a six or five but i'll go up one size and i'll put it on the front and that's going to give it that that tilt and a lot of times that's all you need to do so split rings upsizing the hook or some kind of suspended strips um you know back in the days they used to take lead wire and wrap it around the hook and i've seen guys that weight the back so you really get that snap um i haven't experimented with that i just kind of was watching some videos last year and seeing some guys just catch them down the lake of the ozarks and the guy had a tail weighted like that and when he popped it you know it's doing this he was catching fish i don't know but hook size, sixes, fives, and fours, typically. Let's see. Okay, Hank Snow says, what setup are you throwing it on? On the jerk bait, okay. This is, uh, this is six foot ten. No, this is actually six foot eight. This is a loose custom light. It's their top water jerkbait rod and man i love this little rod um i don't work with loose or anything i got a lot of loose stuff um a friend of mine mike marfell he's been on the stream before but he's the one that got me into loose he he works with loose and 
he uh, he had a bunch of loose stuff. This is years ago, but I ended up kind of playing around with it, and that's kind of why I started getting a lot of the loose rods and reels. And I, I'm just kind of, I mean, I got some other stuff. I got some quantum stuff, and I've got some uh, Daiwa stuff. I don't know what else. I got some Bass Pro stuff, but I, it seems like most of most of my rods now are are these. I've got some Veritas, Abu stuff, but the custom light. It's a topwater jerkbait rod. This is a super light rod, super sweet. Um, and it, it's, uh, got a lot of flex in the tip and it loads up really good. I, I don't lose very many fish on this. Even when they jump, it's got that, you know, it's that, it's got that real moderate bend on it. And even once you get a hook in them, I caught like, I caught two 25 pound stripers on this thing. <laughs> uh, it was new year's, new year's day, like two years ago. I got a video out there. It's really long and I'm talking a whole lot about it. It's not, it's not the greatest videos on my first videos, but there are, two big man pajama stripers on there and i caught them on this rod eight pound test 25 pound stripers first mega bass vision 110 jerk bait did not want to lose it so i took my time it took, i think once one of those took me like 37 minutes which by the way is not good on those fish i had a couple guys hammer me on the comment section for biting that fish too long and then keeping it out of the water taking pictures you guys catch big stripers apparently they're not as hardy uh get your picture quick and put that sucker back in the water. Um, a, they've been you've been fighting them for a long time because a lot of times we hook them on insufficient gear, and I definitely was over overpowered. You know that little bitty rod. And B, um, they're just not hardy. They're not like a catfish or something, or even a largemouth. You can hold them out a little bit longer. So I had, I had the uh, striper police man. They jumped me, and rightfully so. I I was glad that uh, they let me know about those because I had no idea. And you, and you will see a dead striper every once in a while, a big one. And it's probably because somebody fought it too long on light line. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, that's a great rod. I've had a lot of good luck with that rod. I like it. It's real finessey. And, and it's, it's really light, too. You can fish it all day long, and it's not, it's not hurting your shoulder. So, good rod. Yeah, Tugi, I was at the, there was an English Choice going out of Carbondale, and then there was a USA Bassin going out of Pomona. I was at the, the one in Pomona. Yeah, Backyard Bassin says he loves the plain gizzard shad, rainbow trout, yep. The Vision 110 black shad, shh, keep real quiet, okay, shouldn't have brought that up. And then uh, small water charter says Florida cloudy days, dark colors, bright days, which is most of the time bright and shiny. Yes, sir. Sean Seaball, what's up, man? Tom Milk says Tommy says uh, black back, white sides, a little orange on the chin, basically a shad pattern. Yeah, John. Um, I, I don't remember which jerk bed I grabbed out. Or oh, actually, that was that the one that was tied on. That is that deep strike king, the uh, KVD jerk bait, and they're all three the same size. From what I can tell, yeah, I did. This is just straight out of package. I haven't modified that. I don't do. I don't. I don't change hooks on a lot of stuff. You know, out of the package, unless it's real obvious, it's a crappy hook. Most of the hooks are decent, and um. Now, if I'm fishing a, a square bill or something and they do get banged up, I'm getting hitting a lot of rocks and stuff. I will do some modifications or, of course, if they get rust on it. But that's that's straight out of the package. I think those are all – those are a little bit bigger hooks. I would say those are size five. I'm just guessing. All right, Greg, man. Take care, dude. Have uh, safe travels, man. Oh, dude, Hank Snow, the Rapala original floater. God, I've caught a lot of fish out of the, on those, and I get away. I, I always forget about that. You got to, and I have to have a spinning rod to throw that on because that really planes out on you. But that uh, black back, gold sides, yeah, or the silver side, that was a uh, man as a kid. That got a lot of on the water time for me. Okay, the chartreuse, big easy, bright copper, I believe it's the name. Okay. Okay, let's get into, um, I think I'm just about caught up on these. Uh, 
Okay, David says, uh, Gabe, do you do you ever turn the trailer vertical? Are you talking? I guess you're talking about the swim jig. See, that's how far back I was on the comments. Let me scroll these up. Yeah, I do. I do sometimes. Uh, the Z crawl is another trailer that I'll put on there, and that's a lot. That's really flat. You know, that menace, um, the menace is kind of round. So obviously, um, it's not going to cause any lift. Well, you're back to turn the Z. I'm good. Let me go back to what I was saying. The Z crawl has got flat flatness on it, so I'll turn that sideways if I want to get it. Um, the menace, I, I usually just put it just like this um, because I kind of know, I kind of know what based on what trailer I've got on what swim jig and the weight. I kind of know what it does, so. I don't play with it too much, but I have, I have put that Z crawl on there sideways and it gives it a little bit fatter profile. So, um, what else do we got? John's out. Take care of John. Talking about the brand new lake built 10 years ago, just opened boats three months ago. Yeah. Okay. I think I know what you're talking about. Um, is that the one that uh, Mikey Balls had a couple videos on? JT Kenny were out there fishing. I think that's the one you're talking about. Yeah, there we go. I'm seeing Hank Snow. He's on here saying talking about JT Kenny and Mikey Balls. Tom's got that. Yep. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Hey, Sean. I see you on here, man. Thanks for stopping by, dude. Good to see you on here. We're just kind of in the middle of some fall baits. All right, let's get let's get to the grass real quick. Um. Frog. Let's start with the frog. Let me grab some of these real quick. Okay. So, a couple things that I've been catching fish on in the grass recently are, of course, a frog. And this is this is actually I did a little video on this. I haven't I haven't dropped it yet, but I kind of finished it up last night. So you'll see me talking a little bit about this. This is that uh that Matt Daddy frog. I started fishing this around a little bit, and it's been out um, a couple sessions with me. Actually, three. I think I've had it on the water like three or four times. Started throwing this. I threw this a little bit last fall, but it was basically I just threw it out of my pond just to see what it looked like. The top water bite was already over, but I've been throwing this around a little bit and, and been catching a few fish on it. I like this. It's a it's it's a fatter frog. You know, and it's got this real rattle on there. Got really nice beefy hooks. You get those hooks in a fish and they're going to hang on. It's soft. I mean, it's not as soft as like, say, the launch frog by Snag Proof, which is almost too soft, but it's plenty, plenty soft. It does a good job. It's got a pretty good hookup ratio. It walks really easy. It's got a good, uh, it pushes down on the mat good without act actually having to add any weights, any internal weights, which is something that you'll have to do on a on frogs sometimes like some of the like the pad crashers and even the kvd sexy frog they're pretty light frogs so if you're fishing those on the mat i like to put um a bb some bbs three or four or five bbs in there you can put some kind of those lead nail weights in there just to give it some weight to push down on the mat so when that fish is down there that mat's pushing down it gets their attention if it's really light it just kind of skims over the top of the mat and i don't think you get i don't think it gives me bites like that i think they just let it go by it doesn't doesn't cause as much commotion doesn't get their i don't know doesn't get their attention but a frog frog is um i mean you got to have a frog when you're fishing mats i mean you can look at all these these recent tournaments at chickamauga gunnersville uh frog played big time you know lee livesey i think that's what he won on down there what was it i think it was chick but the frog was the deal talk too much more about like this rod this is a seven foot four quantum smoke you need a rod with a little bit of tip but you need some meat because you need the tip to make you know make decent casts and if, if you're fishing a mat you know you can just lob it out there you're not making accurate cash really so you want to err on the side of a little bit of stiffness you don't want it to be so heavy that you're it's wearing you out but you want some meat back there you want to be able to pull them in and um a little bit more about frogs. I keep it really, really simple on the frog, black, white, and um, some kind of orange or yellow belly. Sometimes I go to that brown. It's kind of a little in-between color. But, you know, rule of thumb is black on cloudy days, white on sunny days. And that's true a lot of times, but it's not always true. You can't limit to that. You got to let that you gotta let the fish um, tell you what they think because 
a lot of times I'll catch, uh, I'll catch fish on a black frog on a sunny day. I think that has to do with what they're feeding on a little bit too. If it's a bluegill thing, those darker colors, and of course the orange and yellow belly um, are going to mimic the bluegill a lot more. And if it's a shad deal, which in the fall, it's sometimes it is more of a shad deal, that white's going to come into play. White's been, white's been the deal for me lately. Um, let's see, you know, you guys probably already know this, but the belly color is for the fish and the top is for the fisherman. Really don't see the belly. The fish really don't see the belly. They might see the side a little bit. Like when you're walking in, there might be a little bit of a roll, a little bit of a flash. Um, but the top is just pretty much to get that frog out of the store. Other than there are times when it is nice to have like a bright back. Because when you make a long cast into that mat, you can see that frog out there. If you've got some yellow top on it or whatever, you can you can see that. Um, I guess that's really all I got about the, on the frog. I mean, I could talk. We could talk a lot more about all the different frogs that are out there, but I like I like a walking style frog on a mat. I don't like the popping frog as much on a mat. Open water, they both work. They each got their own specific time and place. But the frog's something that I've been definitely getting bites on. And the other thing that I've been throwing a lot in the mat is the punch read. Let me grab it. Punch rig. This is, man, this is kind of my, this has been one of my favorite ways to fish. I, I kind of started punching, I want to say like 2016 is when I started dabbling in it a little bit. And it was kind of like, um, I remember, um, oh, who was that? It was Hallman. It was Bradley Hallman. He won a tour event down there. I think it was in on Okeechobee, I want to say. And he wanted punching. He was punching those reed heads and that really thick matted stuff down there. I think he probably had like a two ounce weight. But I'd, al I'd always kind of, I kind of tried punching and, you know, I'd try it for a little bit, go out for 30 minutes. I didn't get any, you know, I didn't get bit on it. I kind of give it up and then I'd try it again a couple weeks later. But I never really decided that I was going to give it some, some time until after Hallman won that tournament. And then I think that same year I had a regional down there at Chickamauga. And, you know, chicks and stories were having grass mats and stuff, which I didn't, I didn't realize how much grass that lake had until I actually went down there, but I decided I was going to buy a punch rod and I decided I was going to kind of practice around here because I, before that, I just, I, I throw a frog, you know, on the, on the mats and stuff. I just threw a frog or I fished the outside of the grass. Um, I fished the edges with three eighths ounce, a half ounce weight or something, whatever bait I wanted to throw, but I never really got in there and got dirty. I'd flip the holes in the mats, you know, the sparse grass. But I, I, I just never really got just never really got into punching until that year. And I did a little bit of research, you know, I, you know, I, I bought some 50 pound braid, I bought some 65 pound braid and I kind of narrowed it down to 50 pound, which is, is what I what I like. I bought this rod. This is a another lose custom light. It's the uh, it's a seven foot eleven. It's a 10 XD rod, you know, because I remember Bradley Holman was talking about his setup that day. And he said, you want a rod that's got a little bit of a parabolic tip to it, or, you know, just a softer tip, not necessarily parabolic, but so this is a, this is a big crankbait rod. It's like a 10 XD crankbait rod, seven foot 11. And this is a really sweet punching rod. It's worked out really, really great for me. Um, high speed reel, seven, one or better, but I started playing around with it and I, I kind of fell in love with punching and it's, it's, hard to keep me out of the grass now if there's a mat sir i have a i have a tendency i'm just drawn to the grass so i can sit there and i can punch for like four or five hours until my shoulder wears out and even if i don't get a bite it's just i think what it is is it's the it's that draw to that next that next punch that next flip can be you know a three and a half four and a half five pound fish it's that next flip and it's that that next flip and that's kind of what fishing is about i mean you i know you guys feel that same way it's it's that uh, it's the magic of fishing is kind of that next cast can be that fish. Even on a tough day, if you can mentally stay in it, it's just, you're just one more cast away from getting a bite. It's that bite. You're, you know, the bite is the addiction, just getting that bite. So punching, punching is kind of like that. You know, you keep, you get in that groove and you keep punching and punching and punching. And I just kind of liked it. I started catching a few fish 
started figuring out a little bit of the salties and I'm by no means, you know, hashtag no pro. Um, but I do catch a few fish on it and I've got a lot of confidence in it and it's really, really fun, but I keep it pretty simple as far as the baits. Um, I like a beaver style bait or I like a crawl style bait. And that that's probably 80% of the time. That's what I'm going to be throwing is a, is a crawl or a beaver style bait. This is actually a, reactions innovations man bear pig it's a little bit it's kind of a hybrid of all the all the um it's kind of a hybrid of the crawl and the beaver i guess in a way it's it's basically like a flatter brush hog it's got the little tentacles on there got these little paddles side paddles it's got the little front arms like a brush hog and it's flat um i was just throwing this around because i caught some fish on it last year i was trying something different but most of the time i'm throwing a beaver so my go-to, I'll show you the colors I like to throw. I've caught more fish on a beaver than I have anything else as far as punching. Um, that's all I got. All I got out here is a green pumpkin. So everybody knows what a beaver looks like. It doesn't have to be a beaver, just some kind of beaver bait. There's a bunch of different beaver baits, but that's a beaver. You guys know what that looks like. It's just a green pumpkin. Um, Dirty Sanchez. That's my go-to color. Uh, the Dirty Wizard color. Um, Spray Grass is a good one. This green pumpkin. Uh, something like a Magic Crawl Swirl. The Hematoman. The Black and Blue. I I'm typically going um, with your bluegill colors or your darker colors. I've talked about this in the past, but um, those are the two colors. I, I, I really, honestly, I keep it really, really simple. Um, they're either going to be biting on that darker color or they're going to be biting on that, that green pumpkin color. You don't really have to have anything crazy in between. I will, I will take um, a spike it chartreuse pin and I'll hit the tips. I only hit about that much. Just a little bit of contrast goes a long way. So that adds scent. And it adds just a little bit of contrast. I think the key, the, the fish just, it gives it a little bit more blue gilly look. Um, they really key in on that little bit of chartreuse tip. But um, it's dark under those mats. So sometimes they want something dark. And June bug, uh, black and blue, just just something dark, whatever color you like. But that that's what I'm throwing most of the time. Um, like I said, I'm mixing this man bear pig every once in a while. And then if I think if I'm not getting a lot of reaction on that, if I'm not getting a lot of bites on that, then I'll go to a crawl. And I'll tell you a crawl that I've been playing around with lately a little bit is the burner crawl by Gambler. Um, that's these are worth buying. These are worth buying. I've been catching a few fish on them. this killer G color is a good color. It is. It's just kind of a dark green pumpkin. It's got a little bit of blue fleck in it. It's got a little bit of flash to it. It's kind of a brownish green pumpkin kind of color. It's it's interesting. Um, but I like this color. I've caught some caught some nice fish on this thing lately. So that's that's a crawl type bait that you're gonna want to have. Um, and then another color that they have is the back at you. This is a burnt crawl as well. I've been watching a lot of Mikey Ball stuff. Man. He's a gambler guy. And I'm kind of, you know, every once in a while I try something different. Um, I fish a rage crawl a ton and a rage crawl is great for punching too. Um, I did a video with Hayden Newberry over on Kincaid and he's a big rage crawl guy and he caught several fish on that day. And I was still on this burner crawl and I caught several fish on the burner crawl. But every once in a while, I just like to try something different. And so, you know, the thing about these crawls is these are so multi-purpose. You can throw these on the back of the kid. You can Texas rig them on a light rate, light, lightweight, um, Swim jig trailer and punching. So these are, you can use this for a lot of different things. And then, see, a D bomb, of course. I'm not going to go through all of the thousands of different baits, but the D bomb is kind of a, it's, it's different than a beaver. It's the same profile, somewhat, it's a little bit bigger. Um, this is, this is actually, I shouldn't have pulled that out. This is a really good color. D bombs are awesome. They're a little bit fatter, a little bit slower fall than the beaver. And they got to, I think they put off a little bit different sound vibration or something. But those are the three baits that 
I've been flipping around a lot lately. And then one more thing I'll show you is sometimes the buy, actually the BFE is another one. I don't know if you guys have seen this or not. This is the Big Bite Baits BFE. And I have caught a few fish on this recently. This is a cool bait. It's kind of a tube beaver kind of hybrid thing. It's interesting. You ever, if you watch Bass Talk Live, you probably know all about these. Matt Pangrack and Bradley Hallman. Um, they're kind of the mastermind of this little cute, sexy bait. But um, this is this is a good little bait. This is a good thing to have around. It's got that kind of big paddle tail. You can split it if you want the more beaver look. It's got these little flippers. Um, of course, it's got that tube body to it it's got a hard nose and this isn't hollow this is solid plastic so it's got a little bit different action than a traditional tube it doesn't um it doesn't power quite as much this is a really compact bait and that's kind of where i was going was going with uh it's kind of where i was going with this when i got sidetracked on this so sometimes you got to finesse punch a little bit um and you got to go to something that's a little bit smaller and i'm going to be reaching for two things I keep it real simple, of course. Um, the speed crawl is something you can get bites. And then this this is usually happens. It's kind of probably going to start be starting to happen right now when the mats have been getting a lot of pressure. A lot of people punch now a lot more than they used to, and a lot of people are throwing a rage crawl and a beaver. And this little bitty speed crawl is a smaller profile. When it gets tough after a cold front or the fish are just getting a lot of pressure you can get some bites on that. The baby, they make a little baby beaver and they make a little baby, baby D bomb. That, those are another two baits you can put in the rotation. And then I've got the BB cricket. I may not be able to find it. That's another little finesse bait. I don't think I've got it in here. So. Yeah, here it is. This is by Gambo too. This is called the um. This is a BB Cricket. This is another little finesse and punch bait. So your speed crawl and your BB Cricket. When things are really really tough, look at that. There ain't nothing to that man. It's a little do nothing. Got these little fake pinchers. It looks like the Zoom Little Critter. You guys remember the Zoom Little Critter? It's just a. I don't know. It's just got that little profile, but um, green pumpkin shadow. That's the color that I throw. Caught some fish on this when it's really, really tough. And that's, I really keep it that simple. I don't stray too much away from it. Uh, 50 pound Power Bro braid. I didn't like 65 pound. A lot of guys, a lot of guys do 65 pound. I think 55 or 50 pound handles a little bit better. It's not small enough to where I get a lot of uh, line digging on my reel. Um, I don't have a problem with that. If you go to like 30 pound or 40 pound braid, sometimes that line on the hook set will dig into the reel and it becomes a mess. And you, and you get a little bit more of a backlash on it, but 50's, 50 handles really nicely. It pitches a little bit better. This is me personally. It pitches a little bit better than 65. I've tried them both, and I kind of settle on the 50. Um, as far as a hook, I – yeah, straight shank flipping hook. And I like – this hard plastic keeper. Let me see if I can find this other flipping hook. And I'll show you, show you the difference between these two. What, what I don't like and what I do like. Because I think this is really important. I, I bought a lot of different flipping hooks. And I've got a lot that I don't use now because I bought some that I don't think are ones you'll want to buy. And I'll just kind of save you some money by showing you these. Got to find one. Okay. I was trying to find this Gamagatsu. I've got I've got some of the owner jungle hooks, and then I got some of the Gamagatsu with the pin on it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find those because I think I took them all out. But anyway, this will this will get the point across. So you've got um you got the flipping hook with this hard plastic keeper. This is what I like versus the flipping hook that has this nylon. And guys, give me your opinion on this. Leave, leave some comments. I mean, uh, this what happens, the shrink wrap will come undone over time, and this will slide down the hook. And Gamagatsu has one that has a metal pin in there, and you'll end up just losing the whole metal pin. You know, this is, this is kind of important for punching. You need something to stop that bait from sliding down your hook. 
So I've gotten away from anything with this uh, kind of shrink wrap keeper on there. And I went to the straight hard plastic and I don't have any issues. This thing, I haven't had this thing ever slide down. I don't know if you guys have or not, but for your, your beavers and your crawls, I like a four out. As far as brand, this is actually an Eagle Claw, <laughs> laser sharp. Yeah, just Walmart. Um, I like the Ica Pro VMC if I can get them. But if I'm in a pinch, just uh, go buy Walmart and buy these Eagle Claw laser sharps. They, I mean, you've seen me catch some punching fish. That's what a lot of these hooks were. When, when I run out of the Ica Pro, that's what I'm going to. If I'm dropping down to the finesse stuff like the speed crawl and the BB cricket, I'm going with a three aught. And I always put two bobber stops above. It just keeps it. They kind of kind of rub against each other and it keeps it from sliding up a bunch. One ounce weight is what's been working for me. Ounce to ounce and a quarter right now is still getting through the grass. If, you, if your mats are really, really heavy, you know, if you're down there at Chick and Gunnersville and stuff, you might have ounce and a half, maybe two ounces down there in Florida. Uh, small water charters. Florida is probably a, Two ounce tungsten weight. You want tungsten? You guys know this, but tungsten is a lot more. It's a lot smaller. It's a lot more compact. It comes to the grass a lot better. And that's really about it. I will say on the bite. If you guys haven't done, if you haven't punched much, a lot of times the bite is just super subtle. I mean, it is. You know, a lot of times I'll miss a fish or two first before I figure, before I figure out how they're biting because I go out there with the intentions of you know feeling something like them picking it up and moving off with it or actually a little bit of a tick or a thump and a lot of times i'll miss the first couple bites because that's not what they're doing they'll a lot of times they'll grab it and they'll just sit there and hold it and you just can you kind of checking them and checking them and then it just feels weird you know the first two i usually miss because i'm not used to that feel i still think it's grass i'm just like oh that's a piece of grass and then when i pull it away i feel something that's not like grass um Sometimes they'll hold it, and when you check them, you pull up on them. They'll move. They'll move just a little bit. You'll feel just a little bit of a pull, and I mean it's super subtle. Um, that's why braid is so important. For I mean, more than one reason, getting them out of the grass and um, just braiding grass is better. But a lot of times that bite is super, super subtle. You don't usually get a slam. They don't usually hammer it. Sometimes, sometimes they will, but it's pretty rare. Um, so that's really it. That's the down low on the punching deal. Those are all baits. I've got more, but I got to kind of shut this down. It's getting a little bit late, but let me go through these questions a little bit and make sure I didn't skip anything. And by the way, appreciate you guys sitting with me through this. I hope it, I hope it was okay. Hit that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't yet, I really appreciate that. And if you're new, if you're new on here, subscribe to the channel too. Um, I'm getting real close to 2,000 subs. That was my goal for the year. So I'm excited about that. You guys have helped me, helped me get there. Okay, I'm just kind of browsing through these to see if I see anything that jumps out on me. If I missed your comment, I apologize. Like I said, Greg's usually on top of that. He helps me out a bunch. Gambler Stinger last year. It's money. I, you know, Dan, I see Dan's um, comment about the Gambler Stinger. I, the Demiki Stinger is uh, something that I started fishing a little bit this year, and I, I like that quite a bit. Yeah, Dan, the Tokyo rig. Uh, Cumberland Pro has a, an easy T rig that I've been fishing a little bit this year, and um, I, I kind of like that. It's different. It's a little bit different, but it gets bites. So Tom's talking about hillbilly color and the hematoman. Slow days of BB Cricket works. Crawl Daddy, four inch Gamba four inch Crawl Daddy Shadow Bass, and I haven't tried that one yet. Uh, yeah, David, the Z Hog, the Z Hog is a good bait too. I, like I said, there's other ones that I use. I was just kind of keeping it in general. That punchy bite is going on right now. Uh, Casey, it it is. But it was going on a lot better about three weeks ago. It, but it's still going on. That first time that water gets, it hits that mid-60 degree range, um, it seems like you'll get some bait that will start to pull into the grass. And 
these cold fronts have kind of slowed it down in our area. Um, but, but you'll still have fish and bait in the grass. And, and I think as the water gets a little bit colder right now, our water temps are like, I saw a high 57 the other day, just, just in the, over there near Carbondale and one of those smaller lakes over there, that's that grass is going to hold a little bit of heat, especially on a sunny day. And in the afternoon, um, I'm, I'm usually going, I'm throwing a frog or a toad in the morning in the, in the same situation. But what you'll find is in certain areas, um, later in the day, if that sun has been really beating on that mat, you'll start getting the, you know, you'll start hearing the bait popping. You'll get the, you hear the bluegill popping and, and the shad popping and stuff in there. And you can, you can catch a few punching fish. If, if you go through that area and you're hearing all that and it looks right, the grass is still pretty green. It's not, you know, it's not dead, dying too much. And you think that there should be some fish in there. I would definitely go back through that area with the punch rig and try it out. The, the grass is starting to die off a little bit around here. Um, I just noticed that the other day when I was uh, when I was over there, it's still it's still good enough to keep fish. I think it's still producing oxygen, but it is starting to die off a little bit. Um, and you and you really got to there's right now there's some fish that have pulled back out. In my opinion, I'm seeing a lot of I'm seeing fish out with the shad again. There was a there was some time not too long ago when there was a lot less fish out there. And that told me that there was probably more fish that had pulled into the grass. But they'll, they'll stay in that grass to keep warm as the water temperature cools down. So it's just kind of hit and miss. You know, you're going to go through a lot of dead water with the punching thing. And that's, you know, that's one thing that discourages a lot of people. There's a lot of dead water. You put yourself in a high percentage area, but you still have to cover some water. And you kind of learn what to look for. Um, any kind of little points are always a good place to try, you know, like main lake points and stuff. And then secondary points. Actually, I would go, I would key in on some secondary points right now. I think the fish are in those areas. Um, but uh, those are, those are like high percentage areas and then little cuts, like little small cuts and stuff, especially if you got a little bit of deep water off there, you're, you know, another, th I'm kind of getting sidetracked here back on the mat deal, but if you can find somewhat of a straight edge, that's the grass you're looking for. Um if you've got like seven foot of water out on the front and there's a pretty, it doesn't have to be totally straight, but it's basically if it's not like flattened out and rolling off where you've got the grass line that you see visible is like six foot and the grass lines coming all the way out under the water to like 10 or 12 foot. That's not the kind of grass you're looking for. I mean, there might be some fish in there that that might be like a frog deal, a toad deal. But if you find that, if you find that area where the grass is kind of halfway deep and then there's almost a wall, that's a prime area to pitch. It's just, that's, it's a nice clean edge. That's uh that's a really, really good ambush point for those, those bass. So that's the kind of stuff you're looking for. So secondary points cuts and that deep water that comes right up to a hard grass line are places that you're going to key into. And you'll, you'll start figuring it out. The more you do it, you'll start getting a little bit of feedback, but you got to keep your head down, cover water. Um, if you've got mats, in a whole cove, I'd go all the way to the back of the cove and then come back out. If you just want to spend like three hours going down the bank, punching and practicing, you know, that's, that's something you can do. Some, hopefully somewhere between the back of that cove and the front of the cove, the mouth. And I'm talking a cove that's probably in like a 40 acre cove or something, not, not huge or anything. You're not going to, obviously, if you're like Lake of the Ozarks or, well, they don't have grass at Lake of the Ozarks, but say you're at Gunnersville or Chick, you're not going to just fish a whole cove in one day. But um, you'll figure it out. But it's it's kind of still halfway going on. It's slowing down, but you can still catch the fish out of it. Uh, yeah, small water charters. Thanks for stopping by, man. It's, it's good seeing you on here. Nate's on here. Um, yep, I'm gonna try. To, I'm trying to be consistent, man. I got video Wednesday, video Friday. I've got several on the back burner right now. I'm just trying to do two to three a week. It's a lot of work. A lot of work. Beaumont says, uh, call tips for little grassy, you know, little grassy. I don't fish over there a lot. I only fish over there like once or twice a year. And I haven't quite figured that lake out. I've had some good days, um, but I'm just not over there enough to really give you any tips on it. Um, I know a lot of times those creeks back there, you know, it kind of goes down and it splits. Um, those creeks back there are typically a little bit more stained and that holds those fish a little bit of shallower. But I certainly, I certainly am not the guy to talk about that. But I'm, I'm gonna keep going out there and try to figure that place out. 
it's frustrating sometimes. Okay, yeah, Casey. Yeah, I've been to Kincaid for a couple of weeks, but last time I was over there, I you know had a couple videos where I caught them pretty good punching. So um, they, I think they are they are starting to move out of the grass. But anyway, guys, that's all I got for you, man. Um, I'm gonna get off of here, and I really appreciate you guys sticking with me through this. I hope um, I hope you learned something. Um, I did. I always do. And next week, I think we'll have. I think Greg will be back, so I'll probably be up there at the Backyard Bass and Bar and Grill. And I think we're going to have um, Lucas Dell on here. He is a tournament fisherman from over, over in southern Illinois. He's really successful tournament fisherman. He's, he's a good stick over there. And I just reached out to him, and he said he was going to be available. So I'm, I'm hoping I'll give you guys an update later through the week to make sure I'll let you know if that's a go or not. But um, – we should be back on here Monday and good luck out on the water over the weekend. And that's all I got for you, man. Casey, get a hold of me, man. Send me a private message. I'll get you a t-shirt, man. So that's all I got, man. Take care guys. Peace out.